Hello folks and welcome back to another Football Manager Touch on Nintendo Switch video here on the channel and one of the biggest questions or most common questions I was asked last weekend when I was releasing a lot of Football Manager Touch on Switch content was uh, Kev I've got a bit of an interest in Football Manager but I've never played it before I've got a Switch shall I get it or I used to play Championship Manager or Football Manager years ago or I play Football Manager Mobile and I've got a Switch I think I'm going to pick this up but I really don't know where to get started in it it's it's a little bit daunting when you first open it up so a lot of people have asked me to put together a beginner's guide or a, a getting started on football manager touch on the switch guides so that's exactly what this video is if you're looking for something a little bit more in depth because this is literally going to be a beginner's guide if you want something a little bit more in depth then by all means check out the rest of the channel there's daily football manager content that goes into all manner of different levels of detail I'm basically a tactical genius, as you'll find out by watching a few more of my videos. But hit that subscribe button and check out some of the other videos we've got here on the channel. But for today, we are taking things way back to basics and having a little explore and a look around what happens when you first start at the game on the Switch. This is the same version of Football Manager Touch that is on PC as well. It's not the full fat fully detailed PC version it's the touch version which is a deliberately scaled down version of the game to make it a little bit more accessible to new players so you've got that in your favor to begin with and um, but I'm just going to run you through like the first 10-15 minutes of what I do when I start up a new save I've loaded up my own favorite team Peter United and I'd actually recommend that as my first tip if you're starting out the game fresh if you've never played football manager before and you don't know what you're doing pick the team you support in real life because then you're already going to know most of the players or all of the players. You're going to have a rough idea of what kind of football they should be playing, what kind of formation they should be playing. You're not going to have to figure out and learn a new team whilst at the same time figuring out and learning a new game. Save picking a fancy team that you've never heard of or a lower league challenge or something like that. Save that for your second playthrough. For now, let's pick a team we're familiar with and focus on learning the mechanics of the game. So when you first load it up, you find this screen that throws an awful lot of information at you straight away. But a lot of it is information you don't even really need to know or read. So it's just telling you you've been given the job, telling you a little bit about the club if you want to learn more. Obviously, if it's a club you support, you probably don't need to learn more. Um, it gives you an update on what loan players are currently in the club on loan or out of the club on loan. So you can see we've got two players who are with us on loan until the end of the season and four players of ours who are out on loan at other clubs until the end of the season. So it's just something to be aware of. And equally, we get an update on how we're doing for injuries. So we've got one player who's going to miss the first three to five weeks of the season. He's been out for 10 months with damaged cruciate ligaments. So we're obviously not going to be able to pick him yet, but we're aware he's at the club. And then we're told um, what our competition expectations are for the upcoming season. So we can see that our, our board want us to reach the playoffs in League One. They want us to reach the third round of the FA Cup, the second round of the Carabao Cup. And these are the budgets that they're setting to allow us to do that. We've got £400,000 of a transfer budget and £75,000 a week of wage budget you can and probably should dig into both of those in a little bit more detail through the tabs at the bottom so if we have a look at the finances this will update the day-to-day -day running of the club financially as the season goes on this isn't really a section you need to get too bogged down in other than checking that there's not too much of a downward spiral of money and that you've not in the red on your overall balance because that will start to affect the other budgets. But the things you need to worry about are your budget. So your transfer budget, um, which confirms it was 400,000. It was 400,000 at the start of the season. And um, if you sell any players, 55% of the transfer budget that uh, of the transfer fee that they're sold for is then put back into your transfer budget that varies from club to club and it varies throughout the season so for me if I sold a player for a million pounds I would get 550,000 pounds added to my transfer budget um, if your overall balance starts to go down then the amount of transfer revenue you get to keep will decrease because the club will want to keep hold of some of that money to help their overall balance if you if you get a massive balance because you've sold a load of players gradually the amount of money you can keep from each of those sales will start to increase as well but be aware if you're at a club who are in financial difficulties, there's every chance that you could sell your star player with a view to replacing him with someone equally good, but actually find yourself not having any money to spend. So make sure you check this percentage of transfer revenue made uh, retained before you start planning your transfer policy. Um, £75,000 a week of wage budget, and we're currently spending just under £72,000 um, based on already negotiated contract 
clauses so like a 10 percent yearly wage rise type thing we know that next season we'll be spending seventy-four thousand pounds a week so we need to take that into account as well um you can adjust these budgets i wouldn't suggest fiddling too much with it until you've got targets in mind um but if you are don't don't be put off by um oh the player i want is 450,000 well we can potentially get to 450,000 we just won't be able to give them much wages or oh the player i want wants too much wages or this is free transfer or two or three three transfers that i want to bring in but i i don't have the wage budget for them well you can take some of your transfer budget it out give yourself a bit more wage budget and play around with these figures along this slider but like i say i wouldn't recommend doing that until you've got specific targets in mind because once you commit to it it can sometimes be impossible to go back it varies with time the board requests buttons i would leave this alone initially this is where you can do things like ask for improved training facilities or a new contract new stadium bear in mind all of that stuff is going to cost money you won't necessarily know how much money it's going to cost but it could have an impact on your budget it's maybe not this season but next season it's the sort of thing you'll learn to explore a little bit more as you get more experienced in the game so for now i'd suggest leaving that alone the other tab you can look at on here and that will be important as the season goes on is your competition performance your confidence page from your board so this bar at the top here is your over is the overall board confidence in you you want this line to be all the way over here because that means you're not going to get sacked if this line starts to get down here then there's a good chance you are going to get sacked and that line is largely made up based on your competition performances down here so you can look at how you've got on in each of your individual competitions it reminds you what your target for the season is so our minimum expectation is a playoff finish obviously the season hasn't started so the board are currently reserving judgment likewise with the other two tournaments as well so if we go back to that first screen again and then probably don't hit continue there because we've not met our squad yet but we'll we'll meet our squad in a second um so we're already selling some season tickets and our star striker has been injured only for a day though let's have a look at our squad so if we go to the squad screen we can sort the squad however we want to sort them so if we want to sort them by position we can click there to sort them by position um if we want to filter it so that we've got um, our reserves included as well we can or you can filter it by position so if you want to have a quick look at right how many goalkeepers have i got who are they are they any good you can have a look right i've got four goalkeepers at the moment two of them are considered to be in the first team squad and you can see that that guy jonathan bond is a slightly different color because if you remember before he's here on loan so he's only here on loan so we've got one permanent goalkeeper uh, but the guy who's on loan is here until the end of the season because i showed us that before so we don't need to worry too much about that you can change this view that you're looking at so if you want to get if you want to really dig into some of the details of um uh, of how they are as players you can go into stats and have a look at how they've done in the league obviously there's going to be nothing really on there yet or the attributes tab is where you can have a look at right let's look at our defenders and see what their defensive attributes are if you hover over these it will tell you what they're abbreviated to they're all fairly self-explanatory um, but if we want to have a look at our i don't know let's look at our defenders we said that before so um, we want to see who is our quickest defender um, we can go on there filter it to just defenders and then sort it according to pace and we can see we've got three defenders who've got 12 for pace um, Shepard, Baldwin and Hughes but this guy Stephen Taylor he's pretty slow so that's something we might want to bear in mind when we're picking our defence if he's going to be playing we probably want as a centre back we probably want to be partnering him with Jack Baldwin because Baldwin's a little bit quicker and can potentially cover for him so that's something that you can bear in mind and you could sp you can spend hours fiddling around in these these stats and various things on here genuinely on your first run through though i would suggest you probably don't need to and that's and you can dig into it as deeply as you want to or as superficially as you want to because we have this wonderful button quick pick is your friend ladies and gentlemen we'll come back to meet quick pick in a moment but first we're going to have a look at our tactics page and start putting a tactic together you have two choices here you can initially ask your assistant for help or you can ignore your assistant and just start building your own tactic um, I would always just click ask assistant and see what the assistant thinks because you can always change it. So our assistant manager thinks based on their own preferences and the squad we've got that a 4-3-1-2 might be the best option for us. And if we want to see what players he thinks should be part of that, we can hit quick pick and it's going to populate that with some players as well. So now we can see that 
according to our assistant manager, this is our best formation um, with our best players in their best positions. But if you don't like that, you can just drag hold of someone and change them, or you can click on the little drop-down menu and pick a completely different player. And you have the full flexibility to do whatever you want with this and set it up however you want it to be. Um, you can reduce the size of the screen there so you can have a better look at your players and then apply those different screens on here. So if we want to have a look to see who's got the best fitness levels at the moment, you can look at fitness. Or if you want to see who's in the best morale, you can look at morale. So there's lots of little things that you can fiddle with um, on there. Uh, but really, initially, I would certainly recommend you just kind of go with what the assistant manager says. And as you watch the games, you'll get a feel for where things are going wrong. So if we were to do this this tactic, and uh, it's not bad, but we're we're really giving away a lot of ball, a lot of playing wide positions in midfield. You could maybe decide to move your players out a little bit wider. Um, and just sort of play it by ear, fiddle with it a little bit, experiment. You'll see that by doing that, we've now got these big blocky red areas. These are through this analysis button here. You can turn that off if you don't want the game to tell you where you're going wrong. I would obviously recommend you keep it on because what that's telling you is by changing the shape to that, we've now got this whole area of the pitch where we don't really have a player covering that position. So we could drop him back and that would potentially cover that area if I can actually move him. Let's move him back there. So by moving him back, that covers that area better. Our best covered areas are these ones here because we've got a left back playing as a left back, two centre backs playing as centre backs. On the right hand side, it's not covered as well because we've got a centre back out at right back, our slow centre back as well. So although it's still green, it's not the bright green um, that shows that an area is really covered. So our best, our best areas of strength in the team is this area here um, in front of our two centre backs and just behind our defensive midfielders we've got three players covering that entire area but we might think we don't want lots of cover there we want it further forward so we could move him further forward we're now really well covered in attack but we do have gaps around the central midfield as you'd expect doing that kind of system so you can play around with that to your heart's content but really a lot of it is going to be trial and error I would try and replicate how your team plays in real life as a as a first as a first port of call. And if you want to do a preset tactic, you can go into here and just pick out any preset tactic that you like the look of. So if you want to go for a four four two, you can pick a four four two. You can go back and hit quick pick again and get your manager's your assistant manager's opinion on what the best four four two would be. And these little circles next to the player position, that's telling you they're not really suited for that role or that position. So you can click on that and see, well, actually, he's a little bit more suited to be a winger. I mean, it's still far from ideal because he still doesn't even cover half of that little square. What could we do to make his positioning better? So let's have a look at Marcus Madison. Um, you can see that his preferred positions are actually further forward in the wide areas. So we could, based on the fact he doesn't really fit on the left-hand side of midfield, we could grab hold of him and put him there. And suddenly, he's much better suited to that position. It doesn't necessarily mean your team is going to play better as a result, but it does mean you've got players better suited to the positions they're playing. And again, by pushing him further forward, he's better suited to that position. With Doughty in midfield, he prefers to be an advanced playmaker, so we can make him an advanced playmaker. Um, what does De Silva Lopez want to do? He also probably wants to be an advanced playmaker. Uh, actually, he doesn't, but he does want to do roaming playmaker -y type stuff. And I'd recommend you probably want a mix of type of player in midfield. But if you're not sure what any of these do, you can click on them. And then in this bit at the bottom of the screen, it tells you exactly what they're going to do. Um, and you can get an idea of how you want them to be playing. You can set up your mentality how you want it. I would go into team instructions to do that initially because you get more of the instructions. So you've got everywhere between contain, which is the most defensive, all the way through to overload, which is the most attacking. And you can click on any of them and it gives you a little description underneath of when you should use that kind of tactic. And then you can tweak it accordingly with all these other things as well. So if you hover over them again, you get a little bit of a description. Well, you do on PC anyway. Perhaps if I click on them. I don't think we get any description of them on the Switch, on the Switch version. That's interesting. Um, they're fairly self-explanatory anyway. And also, when you click on one, so if I've, I've clicked on work ball into the box there, it then blocks out in red... Um, 
instructions that you can't have with that. So if I want to work ball into the box, I can't also pump the ball into the box. They directly contradict each other. So if I try and pump ball into the box, we then can't have that one. So you can you can pick whatever of these you want on and kind of get a team playing in your own image. I would recommend you don't have too many of these team instructions because they do start to get confusing and contradict each other. You're probably looking for maybe no more than four or five and you'll obviously put a lot more thought into it than I just have. But if we accept that that's going to be our team and then we can go back to this main screen and hit our team report and say, right, if that's how we want to play, let's go and have a look at our team report and get an idea of what our strengths and weaknesses are. And this tells you where you're good. So we've got a good goalkeeper. We've got good midfield depth. But these are the areas where we're struggling. So we've got one good goalkeeper in Jonathan Bond. We don't really have a backup. We also don't really have a backup left back. We don't have much money. And we struggle a little bit for these areas. So we're not good at work rate. So we might not want to play a tactic that relies on a high work rate. We're not very good at teamwork. We might not want to rely too much on teamwork. Um, but we are what are we good at. Um, nothing particularly. I mean, this is great. I mean, this is posh in real life, to be fair. Uh, but we can see who our better players are. So Stephen Taylor is our best centre-back. Anthony Grant's our best midfield player. And Guion Edwards is good on the right wing. So we probably want to be playing with wingers because we've got a good winger. So we probably want to be using him. Now we know we need a left-back and a, and a goalkeeper, we can then go into the scouting screen, knowing what budgets we've got, and say, right, let's... Let's go get one. Um, so at the moment, we've got two players who've already been scouted. We can ask our scout, our chief scout to sort out our scouting for us. Um, but we've got one goalkeeper who's already been scouted, Micah. Um, and we can decide if we want to use him or if we want to if we want to continue scouting. Um, to be honest, at this stage, I'm probably not just going to grab the first guy that they've got. They've given him a recommendation of 60, um, which isn't disastrous. Um, if we have a look on here, it says he's um, he's got three-star current ability, three-star potential ability. It compares him to what we've already got. So he's not quite as good as Jonathan Bond. He's probably never going to be as good as Jonathan Bond, but he is better than Conor O'Malley. And remember, Jonathan Bond is only here on loan for the season, um, whereas Conor O'Malley is our permanent backup keeper. Um, is Conor O'Malley likely to get any better? Um, we can have a look on his scout reports to get an idea if he's going to get any better, which are hidden in one of these menus somewhere. Um, so we can compare him with Micah. Because this is the guy we're really looking to replace. And, mm, I mean, there's not much in it. And then that's where you make a judgment call whether or not you want to bring that keeper in. And again, you can get bogged down in scouting and transfers and stuff for a long, long, long time. I would very much, as a as a first port of call, and if you want me to go into more detail in any of these areas, let me know down in the comments. I mean, I'm acknowledging the fact this is already over a 15-minute video, and I've barely scratched the surface. Apparently, this is a much bigger job than I thought it was going to be. Um, but if that's been a decent palette, cleanser appetite wetter for you let me know down in the comments what areas you'd like me to look at in more detail in subsequent videos we can do a video on scout and we could do a video on training on transfers on tactics um, but i just wanted this one to be an overview of how to get started because from this point if we assume we're not going to make any transfers we can just hit continue and get straight into that first friendly now we've picked a tactic picked a team we can go and play a friendly watch the friendly happen and then tweak the tactic further or think well actually um, I think we need a striker let's go try and sign a striker so there's there's lots of kind of detail that you can go into from here but I think with that basic sort of setup information you've got enough now to go out there and play your first 15 minutes of the game get an idea of the tactic you want to play and how you want to set the players up within that and then if we want to do a transfers video, let me know down in the comments and we can perhaps do one of those next weekend. If you have enjoyed that video though, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. Like I said, the channel is full of more in-depth Football Manager content than this one. This was only ever intended to be a very low-level beginner's guide to the game and hopefully that's what it's done. I thank you very much for watching.